Hello, my name's Tamara Keith and I'm a doctor in London and I'm doing this podcast about blood gases as I'm asked many times from medical students to explain blood gases. So, so hopefully this will be helpful to you. I'm hoping that at the end of this podcast you're going to know how to analyse a blood gas, what the normal ranges are and we're going to look at a number of practice examples for you to work through to see if you've understand understood what I'm talking about. So first of all, when you are presented with a blood gas, you want to know what is the pH, what is the carbon dioxide, what is the bicarbonate, what is the base excess, and what is the oxygen. And these are the normal ranges. The pH should be 7.35 to 7.45, carbon dioxide 4.2 to 6 kilopascals. The bicarbonate should be around 22 to 30 millimoles per litre. The base excess should be from minus to plus 2 and the oxygen level from 10 to 13 kilopascals. So I'm going to keep this very simple as this is how I've always done blood gases. First of all, look at the pH. Is it low, acidotic, or is it high, alkalotic? Think to yourself, the carbon dioxide produces acid and the bicarbonate produces alkali. Changes in the carbon dioxide are respiratory in nature and changes in bicarbonate are metabolic in nature. So when presented with a blood gas, first of all ask yourself, what is the pH? Is it acidotic or alkalotic? Secondly, is the carbon dioxide abnormal and in line with the pH? So what I mean by this is, is the carbon dioxide high when the pH is acidotic? Is the carbon dioxide low and the pH alkalotic? If yes, the problem is respiratory in nature. If the change is opposite to what you expect, then there is respiratory compensation for a metabolic problem. Is the bicarbonate abnormal and in line with the pH? So what I mean is the high bicarbonate, is it associated with an alkalotic pH? Is there low bicarbonate associated with an acidosis? If yes, the problem is metabolic. And if no, there may be metabolic compensation. Now we're going to look at the first example. And I can see that you're looking at the base excess, which I haven't yet mentioned. Basically, what you need to know is if there is a negative base excess, it is indicating that additional alkali is needed to neutralize an acid. The oxygen level can be helpful for the respiratory status of the patient, but is not actually needed to establish whether the patient has a respiratory acidosis or alkalosis or a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. So ask yourself these three questions when you analyze the blood gas. What is the pH? Is the carbon dioxide abnormal and in line with the pH? Is the bicarbonate abnormal and in line with the pH? So again, looking at example one, the pH is acidotic. There is a raised carbon dioxide, but a normal bicarbonate with a low oxygen. So it's acidotic with a raised carbon dioxide, so in line with the pH. So the change is respiratory in nature, and there doesn't appear to be any metabolic compensation. So example one is a respiratory acidosis with no metabolic compensation. This could be due to respiratory failure, such as a pneumonia. Example two. pH 6.9, carbon dioxide 2, bicarbonate 8, and a base excess of minus 7. So again, ask yourself the questions. What is the pH? Is the carbon dioxide abnormal and in line with the pH? And is the bicarbonate abnormal and in line with the pH? So looking at the markers on the blood gas, there's an acidosis. But the carbon dioxide this time is low. So it's not a respiratory acidosis, but there is a low bicarbonate, 
So there's a low bicarbonate with an acidosis. So the low bicarbonate is in line with your expected pH, making it metabolic in nature. So the primary problem is metabolic, and there is a respiratory compensation because the carbon dioxide is low. So this is metabolic acidosis and respiratory compensation. The raised base excess is just indicating to you that an increased amount of base is required to neutralize the acid. Causes of metabolic acidosis include diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acid from shock and sepsis, or renal failure. Some complicated people may ask you to calculate the anion gap, and this is the formula for that. It is used to identify whether the acidosis is due to retention of hydrogen ions or to another acid. A high anion gap is indicating unmeasured anions are increased. So this would be present in a lactic acidosis, indicating the high lactate, ketones in a ketoacidosis, or the presence of drugs such as poisons, methanol, paraldehyde, or in end-stage renal failure. Metabolic acidosis with a normal anion gap suggests that hydrogen and ions are being retained or bicarbonate is being lost. Causes of a metabolic acidosis with a normal anion gap include loss of bicarbonate, so diarrhoea, pancreatic damage, proximal renal tubular acidosis, or decreased renal hydrogen excretion in distal renal tubular acidosis. Example 3. The pH here is alkaline, you've got a CO2 of 8, and a raised bicarbonate of 51, base excess of plus 4. So ask yourself the questions, what is the pH? Is the carbon dioxide abnormal? Is the bicarbonate abnormal? So looking at the figures, it's alkalotic with a pH of 7.55. There's a high carbon dioxide. So that is not in line with the pH. But there is a raised bicarbonate, which is in line with the pH. So the raised bicarbonate is the cause for the alkalosis. So this is telling you there is respiratory compensation with the high carbon dioxide. So your carbon dioxide is trying to add acid into the situation to bring down the alkaline. The raised bicarbonate is the cause for the alkalosis. So this is an example of a metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. Causes of metabolic alkalosis include vomiting, diuretics, burns, or an ingestion of an alkali. Example number four. The pH is 7.12, carbon dioxide 12, bicarbonate 32 and a base excess of plus 2. So again ask yourself the same, same three questions. Looking at the figures, the pH is acidotic at 7.12. There is a raised carbon dioxide and a raised bicarbonate. So the raised carbon dioxide is in line with the pH. So you've got a respiratory cause for the acidosis with metabolic compensation, with the raised bicarbonate is trying to add alkali into the acidotic situation. Causes of respiratory acidosis include hypoventilation and pneumonia. Example number five. The pH is 7.55 carbon dioxide 3.5, bicarbonate 80. Ask yourself the same, same three questions. And I hope you're noticing a pattern here that you can work out what the answer is without looking at the base excess and without looking at the oxygen. You just need the three parameters of pH, carbon dioxide and bicarbonate to know what is going on. So in this example, the pH is alkali 
at 7.55. There's a low carbon dioxide and a low bicarbonate. So you're thinking which one is in line with the pH? Well, the low carbon dioxide would lead to an alkali. The low bicarbonate would not. So this is alkalotic due to the low carbon dioxide, a respiratory alkalosis, and there's metabolic compensation. Causes of respiratory alkalosis include hyperventilation, anxiety, overventilation in a ventilated patient in an ITU setting, or a pulmonary embolus. The final example Asking yourself the same three questions. The pH is acidotic. There is a raised carbon dioxide and a low bicarbonate. And you're thinking that both of these are in line with the acidosis. Well, that also is possible. In this case, you've got an acidosis, a raised carbon dioxide, a low bicarbonate, both contributing to the acidosis. So this is what we call a mixed acidosis. Examples of this could be in status epilepticus. You've got acidosis from the lactate and acidosis from hypoventilation. So both respiratory and metabolic systems contributing towards the acidosis. This table is just summarising to you that high carbon dioxide from the respiratory system is leading to acidosis, the low carbon dioxide leading to alkali, the metabolic system low bicarbonate leading to a low pH and high bicarbonate leading to a high pH. I'm hoping that that has simplified blood gases for you and remember the three important questions you need to ask yourself. What is the pH, acid or alkali? Is the carbon dioxide abnormal and in line with the pH? Is the bicarbonate abnormal and in line with the pH? If the primary abnormality is with carbon dioxide, it is a respiratory problem. If the primary abnormality is bicarbonate, it's a metabolic problem. And there are also the compensatory mechanisms. Thank you very much.